The USB or universal serial bus is one of the most used communication protocols today. A very special class of USB devices are called HID, which stands for Human Interface Device, and it's basically anything that you can use to input data and control something on your computer or other device. Just to give you an example, every mouse, keyboard, gamepad, joystick, even those drawing tablets and many many more, they all use this USB HID protocol. And that's what this video is about. I'm going to build this piece of hardware which is going to emulate a standard USB keyboard. I am Cole Weaver. Welcome to Designing Hardware. So we're building a USB keyboard and I'm going to walk you through the schematic of this hardware first. Uh, this thing requires no special drivers and it's compatible to any operating system you can think of. I've tested it on Windows and Linux, Raspberry Pi also running Linux, and I even tested it on the PlayStation. Uh, the PS4 has recognized it as a standard USB keyboard with no need to install or to point to some drivers. And uh, that's the beauty of this HIT devices. Most of the times they will work out of the box, completely plug and play, and only in some rare cases you'll need a special manufacturer software to make use of some special functionality. But uh, not for a keyboard or a mouse, which by the way, I only need to modify the firmware in this microcontroller, and this is gonna behave like a mouse or an analog joystick if I want. So basically, very simple hardware. Uh, here's the schematic. We have a microcontroller, an APD AVR here uh, in the center. We have our USB port, which has its four lines, uh, VCC, ground, there's five volt between these two, and then two data wires, uh, D plus and D minus, which are 3.3 volt levels. And because of this, we have two options here. Uh, we can either run the microcontroller at 3.3 volts, or we can run it at five volts directly from the USB port, and then uh, do a level translation here on these data lines, in my case, I chose to run the AVR at 3.3 volts because I will continue to expand on this board a bit. I think I'm going to add an SD card and run some scripts from text files stored on the SD card and maybe add a Bluetooth module too. Um, that will transform everything into a Bluetooth keyboard and uh, since both the SD card and the Bluetooth module will run at 3.3 volts, I chose to run the microcontroller uh, also at 3 volts, so uh, it's a lot easier this way. This chip here drops the voltage from 5 volts to 3.3 volts. This is an LDO uh, voltage regulator, the AMS1117. We have a pull-up resistor on the AVR's reset pin, and then uh, D- minus and D- plus are going through this pair of resistors to two of the AVR's pins. We have our VCC and analog VCC on 3.3 volts, decoupled with ceramic capacitor 100 nanofarad. The AVR is clocked externally at 12 MHz, this is very important because it's needed by the USB communication. It's a little bit overclocked, or let's just say it runs at its upper limit. Uh, the data sheet of this chip specifies 8 MHz or just a little bit higher when running at 3.3 volts. And then uh, we have two small LEDs. Uh, one will be used in the software to indicate some USB activity, for instance. And uh, the other one is just a power on indicator. It will light up as soon as I plug this into a USB port. Uh, we also have the SPI lines. I have a connector for the ISP programmer to flash the firmware on the microcontroller. And uh, then we have four keys on these pins here. I could use more than four, maybe use a matrix keyboard and build a real keyboard, 120 keys or something. But for testing purposes, this is more than enough. Uh, each of this button will send a key or a key combination over USB and I define everything in the firmware and whenever I want to test something else let's say I want to change the combination sent by this button I just have to recompile my firmware and flash it on the microcontroller again I can send any key or key combination like control alt shift or uh, the windows key multimedia commands anything a normal keyboard can do I'm gonna show you how I built the hardware um, I used a raster prototyping board for this and I haven't used this in a while now and it's it's really fun. I forgot how much fun it can be to prototype on these boards. So let's get to work.
charging.
I finished soldering everything on this prototype and then I have some second thought on these keys. I know I said four buttons are more than enough, but uh, I just wanted to speed up the testing a little bit. So I added these two jumpers on the last pins of port C. They will increase the total number of keys I can set for these buttons from four to 16. So I have four values if both these jumpers are left opened. Another four if I connect the green jumper and I let the blue one opened. Another four if the blue jumper is connected and the green one is floating. And then uh, another four combinations if both these jumpers are shorted. And uh, like I said, this makes things a lot faster. Uh, I now have 16 keys or key combinations I can test before I have to flash a new firmware into the microcontroller. So I'm gonna go ahead and start testing this prototype. Every key and combination I'm going to test is described in this document. Uh, these are the hit tables and I extracted the relevant chapters for keyboards. Uh, all the keys and combinations and also the generic desktop and consumer commands. We're going to test some of those too. And I made this list. We're going to do three different tests. And for each we're using different configuration on these two jumpers to define different actions for the buttons. I'm going to put each command on screen so you can understand what's happening before I press the keys. Thanks for watching.